Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, such wonderful words, forgiven. Sometimes we look at our life and we say, Lord, how can you forgive us? All the things we think about doing and the things we do and the things we don't do, Lord. But you've told us by your word that we are forgiven. And we call upon that promise that we might be comforted, have peace in our life. And Lord, that we might go out and forgive others and love others and help lead them to where they need to be in their life. Again, Lord, thank you for sending Jesus Christ that I might be forgiven. For each and every one here that knows Jesus Christ as their Savior and those who will, we give you thanks, we give you the grace, the honor, and the glory. And we ask, Lord, that your Spirit, which has led us here, would lead us on to learning more about your Word, that we might take it into our lives and use it faithfully. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Today we're in Ephesians, the full chapter. What is the most important thing that we should know in our life? There's three words. Follow the Word of God. Follow the Word. The Bible today is speaking about unity in the church. We accomplish unity by following the Word of God. And everything that we're supposed to do in life can be summed up in follow the Word. Not only will we have unity when we follow the Word of God, but accomplish so much more. We hear preachers preaching, be filled with the Holy Spirit, be stay close to God, more like Christ-like, and on and on. And they have the big charts and the, all those other things, but we boil it down to very simply follow the Word of God. It'll help us love our neighbor, stay close to God, be more Christ-like, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Do not make Christianity or life complicated. We try to tell everybody you've got to do this, you've got to do that. The only thing we have to do is to follow the Word of God that's in our Bible. And the Bible says, first of all, that you must be born again. And then it gives us instructions for living. Life is simple. Christianity is simple. Just follow the Word of God. And unity is a very fragile thing. If we're not careful, it only takes one little small insignificant problem, like a harsh word spoken, or ignoring another person who needs to be noticed, or looking harshly with your eyes. My mother was really good at that, by the way. I, I, she had it on the other kids, of course, not me. I was her perfect child. Yeah. <laughs> That was the joke, by the way. A word of criticism when we should have kept our mouth shut. All of us have a tendency to let our tongue speak while our brain is still in neutral. That old saying is so good. Caution, be sure your brain is in gear before putting mouth in motion. Let us know that once we become a Christian, there's a certain way to live. Paul tells us in Ephesians to walk worthy of our calling. Ephesians 2.10 For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, for which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And Jesus tells us in Matthew 5.16 Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. These two scriptures can be summed up how? Follow the word of God. Get into his instructions and follow it. Well, in Ephesians, the full chapter, how can the first verse, how can we tell if we're walking worthy? Three words. Follow the word of God. Follow the word. And he tells us, Therefore, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Of course, we have to follow the word. Word. One of the things that Paul says, put off the old, put on the new. And to do that, we follow the word. We take, we do away with the wisdom 
of the world to the wisdom of the Scriptures. Follow the Word for guidance. What do Christians need a lot of? Well, he tells us in the next verse. With all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. Lowliness is humility, not thinking too much of ourselves or too little of ourselves. Sometimes we get so down we think we're unworthy. Well, we're only worthy through Jesus Christ as our Savior. We have worthiness. Meekness is strength under control. I have control of this situation, but I'm not going to take advantage of it. And long-suffering means to be patient with the handling of the faults of others. We don't have a lot of faults, but other people do. It says forbearance is helping each other through their miseries and trial, even though we do not want to. What makes a church really strong? Unity. Unity. You know, I would have when I went on that uh, whatever that thing was we went on cruise. That cruise, <laughs> Disney cruise. I got a picture of me standing there, you know, that big old ship docked in the moorings. Got me down there making it like I'm pulling the rope to put on the moor to check it out. But you know what about that rope? What makes it so strong? Thousands of little threads going together. That's what makes a church strong. Everybody pulling together makes a church strong. And he says that in the next verse, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Endeavoring means I'm eager and I'll do everything I can to keep the unity of the church going. You know, one of the biggest problems I have in all the churches, and someday when I build a church, if the Lord so sees fit, and I live to be another 50 years probably, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to put one section that has a temperature of about 72, one section has 68, and one has 95, <laughs> and everybody can find their own temperature in the church. No matter what you set the temperature on, there's four fanning and three or four freezing. And uh, the comments always go, did you pay the light bill or whatever, you know, from on and on. But a Sunday school, a church can be torn apart when everyone is not on guard and working together. You find a church that preaches the word and hang on. A friend of mine who had been baptized in the church was visiting a church around here and was told that he was going to go to hell and not be a Christian if he wasn't baptized in their church. He asked me about it, and I said, well, i tell you what you can do. You can get out of that church as quick as you can and never go back. Because if they feel that the only way you can go to hell, heaven is to be baptized in their pool, there's something wrong. First church had great obstacles to overcome because they had the Jews and the Gentiles. Well, the Jews had all these rituals they wanted to keep on doing, even though God said, no, you don't need to do that. And the Gentiles came in and said, why in the world y'all doing all that? I'm not going to do that. And so they had a lot to overcome. And they had to, how is the church going to be run? And all that kind of nonsense. Well, instead of the number seven, what is the number that is best suited for Christians to be? One. One. And he goes on the different ones that we are in the next few verses. There's one body, one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. One body. How many would chop your toe off because it hurts? You know, this morning I stumbled into a chair uh, dodging my cat and I hit my toe. But I wasn't about to cut it off, and that's the way some people are. They want to cut off the ones they don't like. <laughs> How do we keep the body in good shape? Three words. Follow the Word. Follow the Word. Keep that in the back of your mind. All we need to know in the life is to follow the Word that's in God's Holy Bible. One in the Holy Spirit. Through faith in Jesus. How do we keep the Holy Spirit active in our life? Follow the, word. Follow the Word. Follow the Word. We've got one hope. We're called to everlasting glory through Jesus. How do we keep this hope alive in our life? Follow the Word. 
One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord is who? Our Savior? Jesus. Jesus. The Word teaches us He is the only way to heaven, the truth and the life. And baptism, when I am Except Jesus Christ is my Savior, I become instantly one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. One God and one Father of all, who is above all and through all, and good old southern word in you all. <laughs> How do we know that He's God? How do we know that Jehovah is the real God? The Bible tells us so. We follow the Word. The Bible tells us so. You know, there's a lot of false gods in the world, and some of them are so ridiculous you wouldn't believe there's a cow. In India and different places, they let the cow eat everything is up. They don't kill it because somehow or other it's got a spirit in it. In other countries, a rat that brings disease and eats everything up, they can't kill it because it's some kind of god. Then, of course, we have Buddha and Muhammad and Jehovah. But Jehovah is the one true God. The Scripture reminds us God wants to be our Father. What kind of Father have we been? We've been good to our children. Well, if He is better than the best earthly Father, then we have a lot going for us. Well, how many gifts did we have? How many gifts do you think you have? Oh, many. Bunches. Yeah. A lot of people say, oh, I ain't got no gifts. Well, you do. Just, uh, <coughs> but he says, unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. We all have gifts. We might be surprised to find that we have several gifts. Sometimes just being nice. When you come to the people who have been talking about you behind your back and you found out and they're calling you all kinds of names and stuff and you're nice to them. Instead of socking them in the jaw, you're nice. And you have to have a little encouragement. You might say, help me, Jesus. Help me, Holy Spirit. But encouraging, be positive to the people that are working on God's plan and stewards. Don't be like the rich man who built a bigger barn because he had a whole lot more to do. He didn't give anything out in the community. And this fellow that I read about the other day had his 40, built this 42,000 square foot house. Now, is that the best use of your money, you think? <laughs> think before we speak. Have knowledge of the Scriptures. We need to lean on the Holy Spirit for power to not quench the Spirit when it comes time to use these gifts. When we do not follow the Word, there's two things we're doing. One is... Sin. What? Sin. Sin, yes. But I, I, I have a different slant on it. When we do not follow the Word, what do we do? Backslide. We quench oh. the Holy Spirit and the gift goes unused. And what happens with gifts that go unused? They come obsolete. What did Jesus do for us? He died on the cross that we might be set free. free. Wherefore, he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first in the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. When he came from heaven in all humility, he died on the cross, defeated sin and death, and rose again, and now is the right hand of God interceding, He set us free. Well, what leadership role in the church would we like to have? Well, He gave these gifts to some. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. These are some of, some of the gifts that we have, but we have many others. Just cleaning the church, or like uh, Robert did, get our electricity fixed, you know. Just so many things can happen. Uh, the two young men that have given out communion, that's a gift. And the ones that take up the offering, these are gifts. Everything we do, 
in God's name is a gift from God and is powered by the Holy Spirit. Well, what are gifts supposed to be used for? The glory of God and perfecting of the saints. Any of y'all need to be perfected anymore? Shoot you out. <laughs> okay. It says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. To teach the word that Christians might know how to follow the word. So many Christians don't really know the word. You can look on Facebook and see they don't know the word. Or you can hear them sitting up at that table at King Kitchen using these ugly, vulgar words. And they're leaders in the church in many instances. Some of them teach in Sunday school. And they're using words that I don't think a Sunday school teacher should use so they need to be on more guard. <laughs> but we have so... They, they don't know the word. They don't follow the word. And the Bible, we must know the Bible, which gives us the will of God in all things. What is the will of God? Follow the word. Follow the word. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, in some churches, they'll do anything to bring a crowd in. One church nearby is blacked out all the windows. They put blacking all over the windows, and they have strobe lights and flashing lights and all those things in the dancing and the hollering and singing the seven verses 11 to 11 times. And they are seven words 11 to 11 times. You see, they, they're entertaining. They want to get those kids in there. Well, the kids love it. It's like going to a rock concert. Everybody, but they've got to know the Word of God or they're going to just go out and be any kind of person. I'm glad that we come to learn the Word of God. We have ministry that those in need that we try to tend to. If we all follow the Word of God, what we, we have starts with you. Unity. unity. To all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Goal is to unite all unto the faith in Jesus. We are alive that we might do good works. You know, one of the things that uh, we know not to do here is to bow down to statues. You know, we have religions where they bow down to statues and we have religions that pray to the Virgin Mary and on and on. But we know the Bible. The Bible never says you're to bow down to a statue and you don't pray to a patron saint of this and a patron saint of that. They say the patron saint of money, one of uh, health. They have all these saints that they say, well, you need to pray to that saint to get whatever it is he is good at. They're not following the Word of God. And if we want to be more Christ-like every day, all this can be accomplished by following the Word. Have we felt the wind of bad doctrine blowing through America lately? <laughs> it's more like a hurricane, isn't it? The tornadoes are ripping through the hurricanes, a bad wind are driving through America. But... What can we do about it? Pray. Pray. Pray and follow the, word. follow the Word. All we can do is follow the Word. We can't, we can't overcome them unless we vote them out this fall. He <coughs> says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they laid in wait to receive. Good news is false teachers will not deceive us. We'll not be caught up in this feel-good generation. If you like it, do it. I don't see anything wrong with it. If you have a teenager, you've probably heard that before. I don't see anything wrong with it. Why can't I do that, Mama and Dad? Well, what's the best way to show love to someone who's lost? Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Tell them the gospel. Do it in a nice, loving way. He says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into Him on all things, which is the head, even Christ. Today is in that day the truth must be spoken in love. 
But it's not very well received, as we know, by those who are intent on doing what they wish. But we plant a seed. We may be watering somebody else's seed. And the Holy Spirit may be able to convert them. A happy United Church is one that follows the Word. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body and the edifying of itself in love. Now yesterday, me, churches were all over King Fix. That's not the way to build a church. It's okay. Now nothing wrong with it. But you and I have to speak to the ones we come in contact with. That's the way to build a church. That's the way to bring them in. Talk to people that you see every day. And like I've said before, if they like us, they'll probably come. If they don't like us, they may not. But I've, I've invited probably 411 million people in my time. And everybody lies to me. They, oh, yeah, I'll be there one day. <laughs> if I haven't heard that once, I've heard it many times. Oh, yeah, I'm I really want to come and hear you preach. I really want to do this. And that goes back to 67 years of my being in the church, inviting people. But uh, the people follow the Word of God, and teaching the Word of God will help each of us grow in word and unity. Now, chasing worldly things results in us chasing, Solomon called it in Ecclesiastes. Yeah. Vanity. He said, I've done everything in the world. He wrote that book. You need to read that book. He said, I've tried everything that there is to do. Everything you need to know. I've tried it and I found out that it's no good unless you have God. Now Solomon was the one who wrote all the Proverbs. He did all these wise things except one. At the end, he turned away from God in so many things. Just like David. God loved him. So you can see how easy to be swept away by something else. The Bible says those who do not follow the word are walking in darkness. What? Darkness. Darkness. Even though they're walking in the light of day, they're walking in absolute darkness. They're seeking earthly treasures instead of the kingdom of God. But how do we get in darkness? We don't follow the Word. Follow the word. Having the understand darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. They do not know or do not wish to follow the Word of God They've listened to the so-called wisdom of the world instead of the wisdom of the Scriptures. They are ignorant of the Scriptures many times, listening to so many nice-sounding false prophets instead of the Scriptures. Well, what does God going to do with those who do not want to follow the Word besides send them to hell? What's He going to do now? He's going to turn them over to their own lusts. He says here, who being past feeling <coughs> have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. They see no shame in getting everything they can for themselves, doing whatever they have desire for, and God has given them over their sinful lust. <coughs> how do Christians know how to do better? <coughs> Follow the word. But you have not so learned Christ. We're blessed. Since we know better, we have learned the scripture that we might not sin against him. And when we do, we do what? We ask for forgiveness. We repent and ask for forgiveness. Jesus teaches us that he is three things, especially the way, the truth, and the life. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Having been taught the way of salvation, knowing Jesus as Savior, we will strive to follow the word more. 
Now, you know, I see some things that we have to put off here, some things that we can do and can't do. You know, I sit at the, close to that table at King, and they use wild and use the unuseless or useless cuss words. And the Bible says don't do that. It says here that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. We need to examine our own life as we did this morning communion, which is the time to examine our life based on the scriptures and put away our corrupt practices. And he says take off the old, we need to put something on. If we take off the old, what, we've got to put, what is it we put on? New. Something new. All right, can you tell me what was David's prayer in Psalm 51.10? Pray in my heart. Yeah. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Boy, we can need to pray that all day long, half and then twice on Sunday. Need to pray, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Study and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. What is the new man made of? Well, how do we put on the new man? Except in Jesus. We follow the Word. The word. <laughs> and there you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness. Strive to follow the Word. Begin to follow the Holy Spirit's bidding to Bible study to show ourselves approved. Our righteousness is through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, what are some things we should not do anymore? And then there's some things to do. What are some things we shouldn't do anymore? No ways. Got a whole big bunch, don't we? Well, he mentions two things here. It says, Wherefore, put away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Philosophers, uh, philosophers of old says okay to lie, especially if it was going to hurt someone's feelings, yeah, or if it was profitable, or that you were good at it. Plato was one of those philosophers. But what must we not do before the sun goes down? Most ways for forgiveness. Be angry and sin not. Be angry. <laughs> and and there are times when I have been angry hard enough to spit. <laughs> like this old uh, preacher that plays golf up there and he asked him, Do you ever cuss? He said, No, I have spit before the grass catch on fire though. <laughs> But it says, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. If we do our wrath, that's what the devil wants us to do. But God says, Wrath is mine, and he will make straight everything that's been wrong in this world. He says, Don't give way to wrath, for wrath is mine. We can express how we feel nicely. We don't have to let them run over. We can stand up, but we do it in a nice Christian manner. <coughs> Well, how should we earn our living? Honestly. What? Honestly. Honestly. Yeah, honestly. Well, how should we earn our living? Most of you have done it before. You get up early in the morning and go to work. work. you got to work for your living. And he tells us that let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Work is what we do. So we can have money to help others. What should never come out of our mouth? Well, dirty names, ugly words, degrading someone. He says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Give biblical instructions humbly to them. Live a better life and find salvation. When do we grieve? Who do we grieve when we do non-Christian things? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. 
And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of salvation. What is it we do when we don't, when we grieve the Holy Spirit? We don't quench. Follow the word. We grieve the Holy Spirit, and He's the one that's leading us on. What is the hardest thing to do? Follow the word. <laughs> That's true. He says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Well, Lord, you don't know what they said about me. You don't know what they were doing. Oh, I'm so mad I could spit. How can I do this? How can I go and be nice? Well, what must I do? Follow the word, which says I am to forgive. And Michael 6, 8, The Lord has said unto thee what is good, that thou should love mercy, do justice, and walk humbly with thy God. <clears throat> that I have to show mercy. And why should I show mercy? Because Christ did. Because Christ did for me. Oh, God has shown mercy to me. Well, what are some of the best things to do? He tells us in the next verse. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. How do we do this? Follow the Word. The, word. the gifts of grace of the power of the Holy Spirit provide unity in the church. Gifts provide spiritual unity in the church. Because we're one in the bond of love. love. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God's grace gives each of us gifts to use. All gifts are for spiritual growth of our individual and the church body. And that we are to put on the new person by following the word. <coughs>